short, I firmly believe that many companies, by not investing enough in pre-sales or not scaling pre-sales enough, are, are frankly leaving money on the table. How are they leaving money on the table? A strong pre-sales team will ensure that you've got higher win rates, bigger average deal sizes, and faster deal cycles. That impacts the bottom line in a great way, and pre-sales will help you win more. So I'm a firm believer in that, and I, I believe that there's a lot of opportunity for companies who want to invest more, more in this world. I also believe that in a lot of situations, because what makes a pre-sales person can be a bit nebulous at times, we're rolling the dice on talent, right? Sometimes you're over-indexing on experience. And, and sometimes some of the most experienced pre-sales people I've ever interviewed have been the ones that were, frankly, like the least suited to the role because they didn't have those aspects that are on that pyramid of pre-sales. And so having a strong, strong knowledge of that will help in a big way. And as well, I firmly believe that what we provide in pre-sales, the, the entire, through the pitch process, the demo process, the discovery process, it's an experience. It's an experience in your sales cycle. And companies are lacking some of that differentiation because they don't necessarily have a strong pre-sales armor. They haven't embraced it enough to make their experience different than what the competition's doing. A lot of times people will do the exact same pre-sales process. Uh, their demos will follow the exact same structure. Uh, they're pitching in the same way. And there's a great opportunity for us to change that around and be very creative and make your selling experience very differentiated from that of the competition. So in practice, what should we do? Well, we should definitely, you know, carpe diem, seize the day, all that fun stuff, whatever uh, whatever phraseology we want to use. But pre-sales should be a priority. If pre-sales isn't a priority yet at your organization, I strongly recommend, you know, you make it that way, whether that's going from zero pre-sales people to one or going from, you know, 30 to 50 or different ways or however you want to do it. It's an important piece of the puzzle. And in the selling process, as we're bringing our products to market, you know, we all have a part to play in the theater of of sales or the orchestra of sales and uh, let's go with orchestra i like orchestra better and not having strong pre-sales is like not having enough bass in the orchestra which is never any fun and so pre making pre-sales a priority is going to be really useful now i mentioned as i mentioned previously the a strong pre-sales experience is an excellent customer experience hey thanks for showing us all this great stuff you showed us exactly how it solves our problem you made it tailored to our world. You made it easy for me to understand. It made it easy for me to sell internally. That's a great customer experience when I'm when I'm buying the platform. If uh, so, a, a great opportunity there. Stay away from Harbor Tours. Stay away from people who don't necessarily know how to to tailor or, or customize. It works really well. And then the other piece I think that's really important is nobody knows customers as well as pre-sales does because the amount of key customer interactions we have is extremely high. A great way to think about this is if we are talking to customers day in, day out, uh, and we think of this as, as a movie, the people involved in pre-sales are showing up at the key points of that movie. They're showing up at all the car chase scenes, uh, you know, love scenes, bite scenes, whichever. But the key milestones that pre-sales is brought into is, is very useful and gives us a great idea of what's very important to customers. And we do these many, many times a week in those key milestones. And because we're involved in those key milestones, we have a great idea of what customers need. We have a great idea of how our products are working well. We have a great idea of where our products need improvement. And we're always more than happy to share that with the rest of the company. So a strong pre-sales arm is fantastic at informing your product direction and, and your strategy because nobody knows customers as as well as we do because of the nobody shows up at those key milestones as much as we do which is a very important piece and so finally you know fittings we were talking about mad men earlier so a bit of a don draker quote but success comes from standing out not fitting in and pre-sales can be a fantastic way to make your company your product the experience that you deliver stand out and differentiate you so customers make the right choice and go with you and uh, not the other guys. Awesome, thank you, I mean. Um, Pleasure. We're pretty close to time. Um, so Q and A is gonna be a little limited. I do have one key question, uh, but just before we go into that, 
if people want to follow up with you, learn more about this topic, what's the best place to do that? Obviously, they can learn about Hootsuite at Hootsuite.com. Yep. Um, but what about you? Yeah, so for me, please hit me up on uh, on LinkedIn. It's just Amin Ibrahim. Uh, should be pretty easy to find. You can type Amin Ibrahim into the address bar with, with LinkedIn and, and you'll find me and maybe I'll tell you about the baboon thing. Cool. Yeah, the baboon thing sounds fascinating. Um, but the uh, my key question, so... Uh, you know, you talked about the challenges, obviously, from a prioritization of staffing perspective. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the answer often is like, you know, full cycle reps, right? Um, yeah. uh, either early stage, that's how you get started. Or if you're a later stage company and you got like budget crunches, you, you kind of like divert back to that. What What is like the two or three key points you would make in an argument with a COO or a CFO to say, absolutely not. Yeah. So it, it, it's very, very timely in the current world that we're in. And I would actually use an analogy, right? So a great way to think about, um, and apologies, I'm a fan of military history. So I default to military analogies a lot, but a good yeah. way to think of it is, you know, pre-sales is your air force, right? And you can get more boots on the ground. You can get more people out there trying to move that line forward, but typically your air force. And I think it's a really good analogy because the Air Force is expensive, one, and it is also um, can be by itself. It won't it won't win wars. But what happens is you can just keep adding more and more boots on the ground. But you're going to completely run up against walls, and you won't mm. be able to move forward unless you have that support. And I think we can make the argument for any other supporting cast in this day and age. We are so hyper focused on efficiency that we lose adaptability. And in this day and age, adaptability is a whole lot more important. And so the argument I would make is you can keep adding more full cycle reps, but if you don't give them the right support, they're not going to hit their targets. And then those numbers that you come up end up being fantasy numbers. If you think each rep's going to bring in, say, a million bucks, but they don't have the right support, they're going to end up bringing in 500 and your math's going to be completely off. So make sure the right support structure's in place so they can hit that million bucks, and then you can plan accurately. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amin. For everyone listening, thank you so much for joining Feel free to check out Hootsuite for all of your social media management needs. Feel free to hit up Amin to learn more about pre-sales and how that could be a lever uh, for growth in your business. Thanks again, Amin. Thanks for having me. Cheers.